Hi, I'm Anne, and I'm here to talk to you today about why you should incorporate art into your STEM learning in your homeschool. First of all, I want to tell you a little bit about myself. I'm the creative brain behind Left Brain Craft Brain, a blog about in creative and crafty ways to encourage learning in our kids. And I'm also the publisher and the auth one of the authors of STEAM Kids, the best-selling series of hands-on science, tech, engineering, art, and math books for kids. So you can tell STEM and STEAM are very much my passion. And where does that come from? Well, I'm an MIT educated chemical engineer, but art has always been a part of my life. I attribute that to being the daughter of an engineer and a painter. So math incorporated with art and painting involved engineering and everything integrated in my life. I actually uh, was a makeup artist on the side of being an engineer because I needed to explore both sides of my passions. Today I want to talk to you about why adding art makes sense. I get this question all the time. Why not just STEM? Isn't art just diluting the STEM learning? Absolutely not. There are concrete benefits to incorporating art into STEM. First of all, STEAM is all about inquiry-based learning. This is about driving curiosity in kids. Curiosity drives questions. Questions drive investigation. Investigation drives learning. And if we can get kids engaged, whether it be through the addition of art into a sometimes dry subject of science for certain kids, this can make learning more engaging. Second, Art is all about the process. And if you're not focused on the end result of something, it opens up your mind to creative thinking. This is about innovation. Don't get bogged down on the end result. Think about where you're going in your journey. This is one of the things that art teaches kids and adults when it's incorporated into STEM. Third, it teaches the power of observation. So in order to draw something, you have to look at it, describe it, get that, those, those uh, little details onto paper. What do you see in people? What do they need? Those kind of things. An artist is an observer. And if we can incorporate observations of people, we become better engineers, better technologists, better designers of products. Art and observation make STEM better. Super concrete. Art is an amazing way to encourage math skills in kids. There is no art without shape, without form, without geometry, without pattern. Pattern is one of the basic building blocks of math skills. It is an amazing way to encourage kids to develop math in a very hands-on way. Let's talk about hands-on learning. Art makes STEM hands-on. And if you talk to kids, read to kids, incorporate kids, have them experience things, they're learning through all the different pathways that they have available to them. Art can make STEM learning more sticky. And you wanna know what else? Art can save time in your homeschool because if you can integrate multiple subjects, check that box get that all taken care of a little bit faster. It's a funny one, but I like to include it into my concrete reasons that art makes STEM learning better. So when do you add the art to STEM? It's not always. Sometimes STEM should just stand alone on its own. But if art can enhance the learning, it's time to incorporate it. Does it make it more valuable? Does it make it stickier? It is a great opportunity to incorporate art into STEM. So how do you go about incorporating art? You can think about the different types of art and how they incorporate. And today I'm gonna to show you three cool projects that do just this. One, you can incorporate process art. I love process art. Process art is where you're experiencing how art materials work and what, they, what happens when you use them. Process art is an amazing way to demonstrate scientific principles. So we're gonna to talk today a little bit about gravity and uh, use some gravity painting to showcase the science.
the science principle behind it. You can incorporate art history into STEM. Sounds pretty cool, right? Incorporate a little Picasso, a little Monet uh, into your STEM learnings. Um, you can also incorporate design. Now there's a bit of a controversy. Is design art? Is art design? Are they separate? Can they, they equal to each other? There are people in each camp, but when it comes to STEAM, we definitely love to incorporate art into uh, design as art into STEM. So what exactly is design? Design is when you're creating with a purpose. You have an end product in mind. Maybe you're, you're designing a product for a person you're trying to solve to save the world. You're, you have an end result. So design absolutely can be incorporated as art into STEM. You may have heard of design thinking or the engineering design process. There are ways to incorporate design into STEM and their frameworks of thinking. There's frameworks for giving creative thinking into the process. And don't forget, there's all sorts of other types of art that you could incorporate. Music, music and math, you know that combination is strong. Drama, dance, creative writing, public speaking, all of these can, can enhance the STEM learning process. One big question I get, does decorating count? So if you're building a car, is decorating the outside part of, a, does that make it steam? Not really. However, if decorating the car is making that car more effective, more aerodynamic, more successful, art is integrated into the engineering and technology of that car. So then it becomes steam. So three, so today, three really cool projects to showcase how you can incorporate art into STEM. So we're gonna be painting, we're gonna be building with cardboard, and we're gonna be lighting things up. So first of all, we're gonna be doing some gravity painted earths that will showcase the impact of gravity. Very cool. This is a sneak peek into a project in my brand new product called Steam Explorers. It's a cool new online magazine and project portal for kids that is all about STEAM. So as I go through these projects, you'll get to see a little bit of the lesson plans that are included in STEAM Explorers. Next up, we're gonna talk about cardboard cubism. This is an awesome way to incorporate art history learning into an engineering design challenge. In the third project, we're gonna be doing some DIY light up art using paper circuits. I love doing circuits as a way to teach about electricity and adding art incorporates some creative design principles. So three projects today, hope you have fun. So we're gonna hop over to those three tutorials and uh, please think about adding art to Steam. It's a great way to drive engagement with your kids in your homeschool. So today we're gonna do a little bit of gravity painting. This is a cool way to add process art to your science lesson. And we're gonna talk a little bit about gravity. So what is gravity? Gravity is the force that pulls a body towards the center of the earth. Gravity is also the cool thing that pours, that pulls paint towards the center of your very cool gravity painted earth. So here's what we need. First up, we're gonna need a tray and a bunch of round things. Now, you can use pretty much whatever you find. This is a great chance to upcycle some weird supplies that you might have uh, hanging out in the house. Here, I cut some circles out of cardboard. I had these cool half spear, whoa, half spear wooden pieces. You can slice some cork into little um, discs. You can use wooden beads, anything like that. Um, you probably use pom-pom, not pom-poms, uh, ping pong balls and other round things. Anything round is cool for this because it'll give the impression of the earth. 
You also need one of these cool, there's my bead, cool um, baking sheets, trays. So it's a rack. And the reason this is, is because you're going to put the, your stuff on the rack that you're going to be painting. But we'll get back to that later. Because this is a bit of a messy art project. But it's super fun and totally worth it and pretty much the coolest way you can learn about gravity. So what do you need? What else do you need? So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to make a paint mixture. It's not just straight paint in this um, to make it flow a little bit better, to make gravity work a little bit better. So the first thing you need for this is some Elmer's glue all. This is not white school glue. This is a little bit more sturdy uh, and thicker. So this is gonna be your flowing, your pouring medium. So you're gonna use that. You need some paint, uh, acrylic is best, temper works, uh, post paint, whatever you can find, honestly. Acrylic works best because it lasts the longest, but for kids and to just learn about gravity, anything really works. You also need a little bit of water and you need a cup and a stick, Sin uh, popsicle stick. Since we're talking about um, uh, the earth, let's use glass. Then you don't have to throw it away. You're not making plastic waste. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're going to take one part paint. This paint is almost out, so shake this up. One part paint, one part glue all. I'm just estimating here, but you can measure this, of course, to make it more exact. Um, or you can make it a science experiment and see if you can find a better ratio of one part glue, one part paint, and one part water. And then take your popsicle stick and you're gonna stir it all up. Get that a little all mixed in. Now, if it looks a little gooey, a little thin, might need a little bit more paint. I was kind of running a little low here, so I think I might add a little bit more of that and shake that out. And you're gonna repeat this. Let me make as much noise on this video as possible here. You're gonna repeat this with the green and the white. Okay. And there you are. You have your paint. Here's my white. Here's my green. And there you go. That's how you get your paint ready. Now, one sec as I clear all this away and get out our cool round things that we're gonna be gravity painting on. All right, now that we've made our paint, we're all ready to pour. First thing you wanna do, protect your surface. This is messy and it's super cool to watch the drips and things like that. So you're gonna put a tray down. Then you want this baker's rack. It fits over your tray. Now you want one of your nice round items. So today we're gonna pour paint on some, some um, cardboard discs, a few cork bits, some beads. I love these wooden beads. Um, after you pour paint on them, they make a really gorgeous necklace. Hello, Mother's Day gift. And these cool half sphere wood pieces. Oh! <laughs> and the good news is that I did not drop that when there was paint everywhere and have that rolled all over the place. So pop that on there. There we go, we've got our cool little pieces to, to um, paint. The next thing you're gonna do, I'm just gonna push this over here for a bit, is you're gonna make your pouring layers. Think layers of the earth, it's so cool. You need an empty glass. You need your three colors of paint and you need your hair serum, silicone hair serum. What you're gonna do is you're just gonna, if these have been sitting a while, give them a little mixed skin. You're gonna pour a little green, 
a little blue, a little white, and maybe a little more blue. Totally random orders. It really, each, the cool thing about this process is each one will be totally different. No matter how you pour into the cup, how you pour it into, onto your round items. So just have at it. And then you're gonna add a few squirts of that. Add one more layer of paint. And then take a look, it's already getting really cool in there. So you see, super close. Let's see if I can get that under the camera. See how there's like little circles? Those are what are called cells from the silicone hair serum. And those happen because the hair serum is not water soluble and we've been using water based paint. And so those don't help make really cool patterns when you're pouring. So got that right here. Get that over my tray so I don't make a mess. And take this awesome goodness. I'm gonna pour. Look at that coolness. Whoa, swirl over some cardboard. Over some cardboard. Goodness. I'm gonna pour. Look at that coolness. Whoa, swirl. Cool, so I'm gonna pour over my beads, just out of paint. And then I'm going to go do a little bit of a, I'm going to pick these up and I'm going to swirl these just because they didn't quite get all covered. And I'm going to pour a little bit more paint in here because I need a little bit more and a little more serum. A little bit more green and I'm gonna go a second layer on this just for fun and then cover up these beads that didn't get fully covered and then I'm gonna pour a little white a little more blue this half dome is gonna keep getting some pores in it here Till you can keep pouring until you get kind of the, the appearance that you like in it. But it's super cool because it's gravity making these awesome patterns. So I'm gonna lift up this tray and show you some of this cool. So you can see this one's awesome, little earth. Cool. And you see those little circles that are happening there? Those are from the, um, from the, hair serum and causing little cells in it. So gravity, solubility, two forces of science at play in these very cool earths. So now you have these awesome little shapes. What are you going to do with them? You make great paperweights, magnets. You can um, make little Earth Day cards with the cardboard, whatever you feel like using them for, but feel cool in that you upcycled and with really cool process art, and learned a little science on the way. Hi, so first up I wanna show you a project that is really a fun way to incorporate art history into STEM. And this is called, what I'm calling, cardboard cubism. If you're familiar with cubism, it's a, an era and a movement of art where artists broke down their subject into the most basic geometric forms and then portrayed them as if you were looking at it from different angles. One of the most famous cubist artists is Picasso. So, you know, here's my little Picasso. This project is actually an engineering challenge in disguise, uh, tasking you with creating a 3D self-portrait using cardboard and nothing sticky to put it together. So no glue, no tape, nothing. All you can do is create special joints using the cardboard so that things can slot together. So today I'm gonna to show you a little bit about some different cardboard attachments and how you can make 
cardboard projects with kids, super fun. Uh, cardboard is really the backbone of maker spaces. Uh, without it, we couldn't afford to exist because cardboard comes cheap. So we love to use it in a lot of projects. So first up, I'm gonna showcase how we did this. And be sure to, while you're at it, check out the tutorial that we've included in the, the ebook. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna create two head shapes. And I'm gonna push this to the side. And you are going to cut them. You can make them as abstract as you want. Cubism is all about abstract. But I decided to go for a basic head shape for this one. So you're gonna cut two. Now I'm gonna show you the trick. How do we get turn something flat into something like this? You make what's called a slot. You cut a line and you cut a line in the cardboard and then you push them together and then suddenly they stand up and now you have your 3D shape. This is one way that you can attach cardboard without the use of tape or glue. Another way to attach cardboard is to use what's called a slot. And I've already made one for you. You cut a little piece into your cardboard and then you cut a little notch out of whatever you want to attach to it. Maybe this is a nose and an eye in this cubist 3D portrait. And then you're gonna stick it inside. And there you go, that cardboard stands up. Next, I wanna show you some amazing tools of the trade to use for cutting cardboard. Because you know, scissors are awesome, and I have a pair lying around here somewhere, but they sometimes make your hands a little tired. So if you are a grown up or a mature young kid, and you're cutting a lot of cardboard, you can use something like this. I like this, it makes quick work of cardboard. See, there's a nice little slot. If you're a younger kid, there are these things called clever cutters. I love these because the blade is protected and little fingers can't get in there and cut themselves. You take a piece of cardboard, pop it on here. Oops, let me do it this way. Take a piece of cardboard, pop it on there, and pull. Takes a little bit of force, but once kids get some practice with it, they can totally make these work. And then, of course, you can always use your standard set of scissors to cut cardboard. So let me showcase how I did my 3D portrait. I made some hair. I put it in at this angle, this perspective. I made some more hair, put it in at that perspective. I have a funny little nose on here, some ears, my mouth slides into the nice little slot there and there you have it cardboard cues and there you have it cardboard cubism 3d self-portraits an engineering challenge disguised by art totally perfect for steam So I wanted to show you one of my absolute favorite ways to incorporate art into STEM, and that is integrating technology into your favorite art activity. Drawing! Now don't laugh at my drawing. I just wanted to whip this up and show you that you don't have to be a great drawer to make a really cool circuit and to make some art that lights up. So I've incorporated into this drawing what are called LEDs, They're little bulbs here. And you use copper tape and a coin cell battery to wire these up. This is super easy. If you can use tape, you can use copper tape and you can wire a battery. And it just takes a little bit of practice. So first, before I go into how to do this, I want to give a little bit of a safety note. Coin cell batteries, super dangerous if you swallow them. Keep these away from small children. Keep track of how many you have. Don't leave these hanging around. 
So here's what you need. Oh, um, first I want to show you too. I've included in the Homeschool STEM conference um, a cool excerpt from my circuit card book that talks about the basics, uh, circuit card basics. It talks about uh, troubleshooting circuits and it talks a little bit about how to make your own DIY cards. So be sure to check out this, this little lesson plan in there. First, I'm gonna show you how to wire this one up. I've used standard LED bolts. They have two leads. They have a positive and a negative lead. You can use these, or you can use something that's really cool that makes it even easier, but it's a little bit more expensive. These are LED stickers. You can see one of these on my hand there. And all you have to do is stick these onto the paper, put a little copper tape, and you're good to go. And they have a little bulb right in the center of those. So uh, they're called Chibatronics and love them, work really well. Just if you have want to use a lot, go the LED route. So you're going to take an LED. One thing to notice is there are two different leads on this. One of these is positive and one of these is negative. So just like on a battery, a standard battery, you know there's a positive and negative. Coin cell battery, positive, negative. LED, positive and negative. So when you're wiring up your card, you want to make sure you get your positive and negative right. So what I've done is I've taken a little pin and I've poked two holes right there, right here underneath that. And then I've poked, and then I've put my LED through the paper. And then I've bent the leads. I'm going to undo this a little bit to show you. I've bent those leads so that they're flat with the paper. Then all I've done is take in this very cool stuff called copper tape. It's just conductive tape made out of copper. And I have worked my way from one lead to the bottom of the battery, the other lead to the top of the battery. And then I've taped the battery down. Very cool. And now my little drawing about how cool it is to do steam lights up. For more hints and tips, be sure to check out that circuit card ex uh, book excerpt and hope you have fun adding a little tech to your next drawing session. So I hope you loved learning about adding art into STEM to make STEAM. And I hope you'll check out STEAM Explorers. It's brand new, launching on March 25th. And uh, I know that your kids will enjoy learning about science, tech, engineering, art, and math through fun, hands-on projects. Thanks for having me today.